This is the probable cause affidavit for Richard M. Allen of the Delphi, Indiana case, Abby and Libby. That on February 14th, 2017, victim one and two were found deceased in the woods approximately 0.2 miles northeast of the Monon High Bridge in Carroll County. Their bodies were located on the north side of Deer Creek. At the time, the Monon High Bridge Trail was approximately one mile gravel trail terminating at the Monon High Bridge. The Monon High Bridge is an abandoned railroad trestle approximately 0.25 miles long spanning the Deer Creek and Deer Creek Valley on the southeast end of the trail. Approximately 0.7 miles northwest on the trail from the northwestern edge of the Monon High Bridge is the Freedom Bridge, which is a pedestrian bridge spanning State Road 25. Approximately 350 feet west of the Freedom Bridge was a former railroad overpass over Old State Road 25, also known as the County Road 300 North. The trail terminates just west of the former railroad overpass. The majority of the trail is in a wooded area with a steep embankment on the south side of the trail. The entirety of the trail and the location of the girls' bodies were and are located in the Carroll County, in Carroll County, Indiana. Through interviews, reviews of electronic records, and reviews of a video of the Hoosier Harvest, Harvest Store, investigators believe victim one and victim two were dropped off across from the Mears Farm at 1.49 p.m. on February 13, 2017, by blank. The Mears Farm is located on the north side of County Road 300 North, near an entrance to the trails. A video from Victim 2's phone shows that at 2.13 p.m., Victim 1 and Victim 2 encountered a male subject on the southeast portion of the Monon High Bridge. The mail ordered the, ordered the girls, guys, down the hill. No witnesses saw them after this time. No outgoing communications were found on Victim 2's phone until on Victim 2's phone after this time. Their bodies were discovered on February 14, 2017. The video discovered from Victim 2's phone shows Victim 1 walking southeast on the Monon High Bridge while a male subject wearing a dark jacket and jeans walks behind her. As the male subject approaches Victim 1 and Victim 2, one of the victims mentions gun. Near the end of the video, a male is seen and heard telling the girls, guys, down the hill. The girls then begin to proceed down the hill and the video ends. A still photograph taken from the video and the guys down the hill audio was subsequently released to the public to assist in investigations and in identifying the male. Victim 1 and 2's deaths were ruled homicides. Clothes were found in the Deer Creek belonging to victim 1 and 2, south of where their bodies were located. There was a 40 caliber unspent round less than 2 feet away from victim 2's body between victim 1 and victim 2. The round was unspent and had extraction marks on it. Interviews were conducted with three juveniles, blank and blank. They advised that they were on the Monon High Bridge Trail on February 13, 2017. They advised that they were walking on the trail toward Freedom Bridge to go home when they encountered a male walking from Freedom Bridge towards the Monon High Bridge. Blank described the male as kind of creepy, and he was wearing like blue jeans, a like really light blue jacket, and his hair was gray, maybe a little brown, and he didn't really show his face. She advised that the jacket was a duck canvas type jacket. Blank advised that she said hi to the male, but he just glared at them. She recalled him being in all black and had something covering his mouth. She described him as not very tall with a bigger build. She said he was not bigger than 5'10". Blank advised he was wearing a black hoodie, black jeans, and black boots. She stated he had his hands in his pocket. Blank showed investigators photographs she took on her phone while she was on the trail that day. The photographs included a photo of the Monon High Bridge taken at 12.43 p.m. and another taken at 1.26 p.m. of the bench east of the Freedom Bridge. Blank advised that after she took the photo of the bench, they started walking back towards the Freedom Bridge. 
She advised that was when they encountered the man who matched the description of the photograph taken from Victim 2's video. Blank described the man she encountered on the trail as wearing a blue or black windbreaker jacket. She advised that the jacket had a collar and he had his hood up from the clothing underneath his jacket. She advised he was wearing baggy jeans and was taller than her. She advised her head came up to approximately his shoulder. She advised she said hi to the man and that he said nothing back. She stated he was walking with a purpose, like he knew where he was going. She stated he had his hands in his pocket and kept his head down. She advised she did not get a good look at his face, but believed him to be a white male. The girls advised after encountering the male, they continued their walk across the Freedom Bridge and the Old Railroad Bridge over Old State Road 25. Investigators spoke with Blank, who advised she was on the trails on February 13, 2017. Videos from the Hoosier Harvest Store captured Blank vehicle traveling eastbound at 1.46 p.m. toward the entrance across from the Mears Farm. Blank advised she saw four juvenile females walking on the bridge over Old State Road 25 as she was driving underneath on her way to work. Blank advised there were no other cars parked across from the mayor's farm when she parked. She advised she walked to the Monon High Bridge and observed a male matching the one from Victim 2's video. She described the male that she saw as a white male wearing blue jeans and a black jacket. She advised he was standing on the first platform of the Monon High Bridge, approximately 50 feet from her. She advised that she turned around at the bridge and continued her walk. She advised approximately halfway between the bridge and the parking area across from the Mears Farm, she passed two girls walking towards the Moon and High Bridge. She advised she believed the girls were Victim 1 and Victim 2. Video from the Hoosier Harvest Store shows at 1.49 p.m. a white car matching blank vehicle traveling away from the entrance across from the Myers Farm. The Mears Farm, I'm sorry. Blank advised she finished her walk and saw no other adults other than the male on the bridge. Her vehicle is seen on the Hoosier Harvest Store video at 2.14 p.m., leaving westbound from the trails. Blank advised when she was leaving, she noted a vehicle was parked in an odd manner at the old Child Protective Services building. She said it was not odd for vehicles to be parked back there, but she noticed it was odd because of the manner it was parked, backed in near the building. Investigators received a tip from Blank, in which he stated he was on his way to Delphi on State Road 25 around 2.10 p.m. on February 13, 2017. He noticed a purple PT Cruiser, or small SUV-type vehicle, parked on the south side of the old CPS building. He stated it appeared as though it was backed in to conceal the license plate of the vehicle. Blank both drew diagrams of where they saw the vehicle parked, and their diagrams generally matched as to the area of the vehicle and the manner that it was parked. Blank advised he remembered seeing a small, dark-colored car parked at the old CPS building. He described it as possibly being a smart car. Blank vehicle is seen leaving at 2.28 p.m. on the Hoosier Harvest Store video. Investigators spoke with Blank, who stated that she was traveling east on 300 North on February 13th and observed a male subject walking west on the north side of 300 North away from the Monon High Bridge. Blank advised that the male subject was wearing a blue colored jacket, blue jeans, and was muddy and bloody. Let me go back to right here. It says February 13th, 2022, but I don't, I think that that could be a typo. She further stated that it appeared he had gotten into a fight. Investigators were able to determine from watching the video from the Hoosier Harvest Store that Blank was traveling on CR 300 North at approximately 3.57 p.m. Through interviews, electronic data, photographs, and video from the Hoosier Harvest Store investigators, determined that there were other people on the trail that day after 2.13 p.m. Those people were interviewed, and none of those individuals encountered the male subject referenced above, witnessed by the juvenile girls blank and blank. Further, none of those individuals 
witness victim one and victim two. Investigators reviewing prior tips encountered a tip narrative from an officer who interviewed Richard Allen in 2017. The narrative stated, Mr. Allen was on the trail between 1.30 and 3.30. He parked at the old Farm Bureau building and walked to the new Freedom Bridge. While at the Freedom Bridge, he saw three females. He noted one was taller and had brown or black hair. He did not remember the description, nor did he speak with them. He walked from the Freedom Bridge to the High Bridge. He did not see anybody, although he stated he was watching a stock ticker on his phone as he walked. He stated there were vehicles parked at the High Bridge trailhead. However, he did not pay attention to them, and he did not take any photos or videos. His cell phone did not list an IMEI, but did have the following. And then it gives the coordinates. Potential follow-up information. Who were the three girls walking? Who were the three girls walking in the area of the Freedom Bridge? Investigators believe Mr. Allen was referring to the former Child Protective Services building, as there is not a Farm Bureau building in the area, nor had there been. Investigators believe that the females he saw included blank and blank due to the time that they were leaving the trail, the time that he reported getting to the trail, and the description of the three females. Investigators discovered Richard Allen owned two vehicles in 2017, a 2016 black Ford Focus and a 2006 gray Ford 500. Investigators observed a vehicle that resembled Alec Allen's 2016 Ford Focus on the Hoosier Harvestone video at 1.27 p.m. traveling westbound on CR 300 North in front of the Hoosier Harvest Store, which coincided with his statements that he arrived around 1.30 p.m. at the trails. Investigators note witnesses described the vehicles parked at the former CPS building as a PT Cruiser small SUV or smart car. Investigators believe those descriptions are similar in nature to a 2016 Ford Focus. On October 13, 2022, Richard Allen was interviewed again by investigators. He advised he was on the trails on February 13, 2017. He stated he saw juvenile girls on the trails east of Freedom Bridge and that he went on to Monon High Bridge. Richard Allen further stated that he went out to the Monon High Bridge to watch fish. Later in his statement, he said he walked out to the first platform on the bridge. He stated he then walked back, sat on a bench, and then left. He stated he parked his car on the side of an old building. He told investigators he was wearing blue jeans and a blue or black Carhartt jacket with a hood. He advised he may have been wearing some type of head covering as well. He further claimed he saw no one else except for the juvenile girls he saw east of the bridge. He told investigators he owns firearms and they are at his home. Richard Allen's wife, Kathy Allen, also spoke to investigators. She confirmed that Richard did have guns and knives at the residence. She also stated that he still owns a blue Carhartt jacket. On October 13, 2022, Investigators executed a search warrant of Richard Allen's residence at 1967 North Whiteman Drive, Delphi, Carroll County, Indiana. Among the other items, officers located jackets, boots, knives, firearms, including a Sig Sauer model P226 40 caliber pistol with serial number U625627. Between October 14, 2022 and October 19, 2022, the Indiana State Police Laboratory performed an analysis on Allen's Sig Sauer Model P226. The laboratory performed a physical examination and classification of the firearm, function test, barrel and overall length measurement, test firing, ammunition component characteriz characterization, microscopic comparison, and NIBIM. The lab determined that the unspent round located within two feet of victim two's body had been cycled through Richard M. Allen's SIG Sauer model 
P226. Oof. The laboratory remarked, an identification opinion is reached when the evidence exhibits an agreement of class, characteristics, and a sufficient agreement of the individual marks. Sufficient agreement is related to the significant duplication of random striated impressed marks as evidence watch this sorry as evidenced by the correspondence of a pattern or combination of patterns of surface contours the interpretation of identification is subjective in nature and is based on relevant scientific research and the reporting examiner's training and experience Investigators then ran the firearm and found that the firearm was purchased by Richard Allen in 2001. Richard Allen voluntarily came to the Indiana State Police Post on October 26, 2022. He spoke with investigators and stated that he never allowed anyone to use or borrow the gun. When asked about the unspent bullet, he did not have an explanation of why the bullet was found between the bodies of one and two. He again admitted that he was on the trail, but denied knowing victim one or two and denied any involvement in their murders. Carroll County Sheriff's Department Detective Blank has been part of the investigation since it started in 2017. He's had the opportunity to review and examine evidence gathered in this investigation. Detective Blank, along with other investigators, believe the evidence gathered shows that Richard Allen is the male subject seen in the video from victim two's phone who forced the victims down the hill further that the victims were forced down the hill by richard allen and led to the location where they were murdered though the statements and photographs of the juvenile females and the statement of blank and blank were at the southeast edge of the trail at 12:43 p.m east of freedom bridge at 1:26 p.m and walked across the former railroad overpass over Old State Road 25 after 1.26 p.m. and before 1.46 p.m. They walked the entirety of the trail and observed only one person, an adult male. Blank vehicle is seen on the Hoosier Harvest Store video at 1.46 p.m. and leaving at 2.14 p.m. She stated she only saw one adult male. Blank and Blank described the male in similar manners, wearing similar clothing, leading investigators to believe all four saw the same male individual. Investigators believe the male observed by Blank and Blank is the same male depicted in the video from victim two's phone due to the descriptions of the male by the four females matching the male in the video. Furthermore, victim two's video was taken at 12.13 p.m. and Blank saw only one male while she was on the trail from approximately 1.46 to 2.14. Investigators believe Richard Allen was the male seen by Blank and Blank and the male seen in victim two's video. Richard Allen told investigators he was on that trail from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. that day. Video from Hoosier Harvest Store shows a vehicle that matches the description of Richard Allen's vehicle passing at 1.27 p.m. towards the former CPS building. The clothing he told investigators he was wearing matched the clothing of the male in Victim 2's video and the clothing descriptions provided by Blank and Blank. A vehicle matching the description of his 2016 Ford Focus is seen at or around 2.10 p.m., 2.14 p.m., and 2.28 p.m. at the former CPS building. Through his own admissions, Richard Allen walked the trails and eventually hiked to the Monenhai Bridge and walked out onto the Monenhai Bridge. A male subject matching Richard Allen's description was not seen on the trail after 2.13 p.m., Investigators identified other individuals on the trails or CR 300 North between 2.30 p.m. and 4.11 p.m. None of those individuals saw a male subject matching the description of Richard Allen on the trail. Furthermore, Richard Allen stated that he only saw three girls on the trail who investigators believed to be blank. Investigators believe Richard Allen was not seen on the trail after 2.13 p.m., because he was in the woods with victim one and two. An unspent 40 caliber round between the bodies of victim one and victim two was forensically determined to have been cycled through Richard Allen's Sig Sauer model P226. 
The gun was found at Richard Allen's residence and he admitted he owned it. Investigators were able to determine that he owned it since 2001. He stated he had not been on that property where the unspent round was found, that he did not know the property owner, that he had no explanation as to why a round cycled through his firearm would be at that location. Furthermore, he stated that he never allowed anyone to use or borrow the gun. Investigators believe that after the victims were murdered, Richard Allen returned to his vehicle by walking down CR 300 North. Investigators believe he was seen by blank walking back to his vehicle on CR 300 North with the clothes that were muddy and bloody. Blank, along with investigators, believe the statements made by the witnesses because the statements corroborate the timeline of the death of the two victims, as well as coincide with the admissions made by Richard Allen. Further, the accounts relayed by Blank and Blank are similar, and the nature and the timestamps on the photographs taken by Blank. They correspond to the times the juvenile female said that they were on the trail and saw the male individual. 